वेलकम टू प्रैक्टिकल मेडिसिन टूडेज टॉपिक इज डायरिया वॉट इज डायरिया वेन देर इज इंक्रीज इन द डेली स्टूल वेट मोर देन टू हंड्रेड ग्राम देन द कंडीशन इज नोन एज डायरिया इंक्रीज इन स्टूल लिक्विडिटी एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ मोर देन थ्री बोवेल मूवमेंट्स पर डे इफ द कंसिस्टेंसी इज लिक्विड और सेमी फॉर्म इवन वन एपिसोड इज कंसिडर्ड एज डायरिया सो डायरिया टर्म डिफरेंट थिंग्स If increase in daily stool weight more than 200 g that is first thing or increase in stool liquidity and frequency of more than 3 bowel movements per day or if the consistency is liquid or semi formed even one episode is considered as diarrhea now what is the mechanism of diarrhea osmotic diarrhea what is the mechanism of osmotic diarrhea increase amount of poorly absorbable osmotically active solutes in the gut lumen secretory diarrhea secretion of chloride and water with or without inhibition of normal active sodium and water reabsorption so this is the mechanism behind the secretory diarrhea due to active inflammation into the bowel lumen there is exudation of mucus blood and proteins so that is typical mechanism of the blood diarrhea inflammation in the bowel lumen increase or decrease intestinal motility here the contact between the luminal contents and mucosal surfaces alter so these are the mechanisms of diarrhea first one osmotic diarrhea second one secretory diarrhea third one mucus and blood related diarrhea and fourth one increase and decrease intestinal motility so that it can alter the bowel movements clinical classification of diarrhea it includes the acute diarrhea and second one chronic diarrhea acute diarrhea diarrhea of abrupt onset less than 2 weeks of the duration then it can termed as acute diarrhea chronic diarrhea diarrhea of more than 4 weeks of the duration then it termed as chronic diarrhea so clinical classification of diarrhea includes acute diarrhea and chronic diarrhea so here we are starting with the diarrhea differential diagnosis Number one, sudden diarrhea with fever and vomiting. Initial investigations: full blood count, urine and electrolyte examination, stool for culture and sensitivity, and NB measures to prevent the cross infection. So the first one, sudden diarrhea with fever and vomiting, it includes viral gastroenteritis, usually Norwalk virus. It is suggested by diarrhea in older children and adults, and symptoms resolve in two weeks. it is confirmed by detection of norwalk virus in this stool second one rota virus it is suggested by the diarrhea in children less than 5 years symptoms resolve in a week it is confirmed by detection of rota virus in the stool by immunoassay or pcr test next antibiotic induced bacterial opportunities for example clostridium difficile and it is suggested by watery diarrhea with history of recent antibiotic therapy abdominal cramps and increased white cell count it is confirmed by stool culture clostridium difficile toxins a and b in the stool so that is antibiotic induced bacterial opportunities fourth one food poisoning toxin salmonella typhimurium it is suggested by eating doubtful meat eggs poultry food it is associated with the fever relative bradycardia headache and dry cough so it is confirmed by the stool microscopy and the culture so all this viral gastroenteritis rota virus antibiotic induced bacterial opportunities food poisoning toxins salmonella typhimurium we see the sudden diarrhea with fever and vomiting next clostridium perfringens it is suggested by eating doubtful meat incubation period 8 to 16 hour it is associated with the abdominal cramps little vomiting and last for 1 to 2 day it is confirmed by organism isolation from the feces or suspected food next staphylococcus aureus it is suggested by eating doubtful meat and incubation period less than 6 hours and it is associated with mark vomiting it is confirmed by isolation of staphylococcus aureus from the examination of the suspected food next bacillus cereus eating doubtful rice incubation period less than 6 hour and it is associated with the marked vomiting it is confirmed by stool microscopy and culture next vibrio para hemolyticus it is suggested by eating doubtful seafood incubation period 16 to 72 hours 
and it is confirmed by stool microscopy and culture. Botulism it is suggested by eating doubtful canned food incubation period 18 to 36 hour which may vary from 4 hours up to 8 days it is associated with the abdominal cramps dry mouth diplopia and progressive paralysis and clostridium botulinum toxin in serum or feces as well as clostridium botulinum toxin isolated from the suspected food that should be the confirmation so that we can definitely say that the condition is botulism so all these conditions in which we are finding the sudden diarrhea with fever and vomiting second recurrent diarrhea with blood plus or minus mucus typically it's a bloody flux initial investigations full blood count urine and electrolyte examination stool for culture and sensitivity and be measures should be taken to prevent the cross infection so first one crohn's disease it is suggested by chronic diarrhea with abdominal pain weight loss right lower quadrant mass or fullness mouth ulcers it is confirmed by colonoscopy with biopsy barium studies that shows keep lesions string sign it is present in the advanced cases so it is typically crohn's disease second one ulcerative colitis that is suggested by lower abdominal cramps it is associated with the increased urgency to defecate severe diarrhea high fever in acute attack full blood count that shows increased white cell count urine and electrolyte examination shows increased urea and creatinine and the patient is in the dehydration status it is confirmed by the colonoscopy with biopsy barium studies that shows loss of hostrations mucosal edema and ulcerations next one colonic carcinoma that is suggested by alternate diarrhea and constipation and it is confirmed by barium edema that shows filling defect colonoscopy with biopsy that shows mass and malignant histology is present so that is typically colonic carcinoma in all of these conditions we are seeing recurrent diarrhea with blood plus or minus mucus and it is known as bloody flux next colorectal carcinoma that is suggested by sensation of incomplete evacuation it is confirmed by sigmoidoscopy with biopsy that shows mass and malignant histology barium enema that shows filling defect so that is typically colorectal carcinoma next diverticular disease or diverticulitis it is suggested by middle aged or elderly patients typically it is associated with the diarrhea obviously with blood plus or minus mucus left iliac fossa pain and tenderness and abdominal and rectal mass it is confirmed by barium edema that shows opaque filling diverticular colonoscopy that shows inflamed foci so that is typically diverticular disease diverticulitis acute bloody diarrhea plus or minus mucus and typically it is known as dysentery initial investigations full blood count urine and electrolyte stool for culture and sensitivity and be measured should be taken to prevent the cross infection all these conditions we are going to see the acute bloody diarrhea plus or minus mucus and typically dysentery in type so first campylobacter enteritis it is suggested by associated severe abdominal pain it is confirmed by the stool microscopy and culture of the organism cigella bacillary dysentery it is suggested by the blood and mucus as well as there is fever and abdominal pain is also associated symptoms it is confirmed by the stool microscopy revealing red cells pus cells and appearance of organism entero invasive escherichia coli it is suggested by the fever watery diarrhea and later the diarrhea is bloody in nature it is confirmed by the stool microscopy and culture of the organism that shows e coli enterohemorrhagic type e coli it is suggested by without fever bloody diarrhea hemolytic uremic syndrome it is confirmed by the stool microscopy and culture of the organism that shows e coli type 0157 entamoeba histolytica amoebic dysentery it is suggested by abdominal discomfort flatulence frequent watery bloody diarrhea and it is confirmed by the stool microscopy and culture of the organism so that is typically entamoeba histolytica 
differential diagnosis of acute bloody diarrhea plus or minus mucus typically it is known as dysentery now the fourth one watery diarrhea that results in dehydration investigations full blood count urine and electrolyte examination stool for culture and sensitivity and nb measure should be taken to prevent the cross infection so the first watery diarrhea it is travelers diarrhea that is suggested by the history of recent travel no obvious ingestion of contaminated water or food it is confirmed by the rapid resolution or response to ciprofloxacin second one enterotoxigenic escherichia coli that is the commonest cause of the watery diarrhea incubation period 12 to 72 hours in relation to contact to others with similar features confirmed by stool microscopy and culture next vibrio cholera incubation period from few hours to 5 day there is profuse watery diarrhea fever along with vomiting it is confirmed by the stool microscopy and culture rota virus typical watery diarrhea in children less than 5 years and symptoms resolve in a week it is confirmed by the detection of virus in the stool by immunoassay or pcr norwalk virus typically watery diarrhea in older children and adults and symptoms resolve in 2 week it is confirmed by detection of norwalk virus in stool specimen so these all are the differential diagnosis of the watery diarrhea and watery diarrhea once occur it results in the dehydration now the next recurrent diarrhea with no blood in the stool and without fever no fever investigations full blood count urine and electrolyte examination liver function test random glucose t4 and tsh so typically irritable bowel syndrome it is suggested by no weight loss intermittent daytime diarrhea the bowel pain is relieved by the defecation abdominal distension mucus but no blood in the stool mucus is present but blood is not present in the stool that is irritable bowel syndrome it is confirmed by normal colonoscopy and barium studies now the next fecal impaction with the overflow it is seen in the elderly patient and hard feces on the rectal examination so that is suggested by the patient is elder as well as the feces is hard and on the rectal examination abdominal x ray may show fecal impaction it is responded by the suppositories or removal of the feces that is typical fecal impaction with overflow now the malabsorption due to celiac disease lactose intolerance pancreatic disease or whipple's disease it is suggested by pale bulky offensive stools weight loss sign of nutritional deficiencies it is confirmed by the celiac screening test small bowel biopsy or lactose tolerance test intestinal biopsy that shows foamy macrophages contains PAS positive glycoprotein in the whipple's type of disease so that is malabsorption due to celiac disease lactose intolerance pancreatic disease and whipple's disease now the next one drug induced recurrent diarrhea without blood without fever there is a history of laxative abuse magnesium alkalis antibiotics hypotensive agents and alcohol and it is confirmed by the resolution on withdrawing the drugs so that is the drug induced recurrent diarrhea without blood without fever now in the hiv infection it is suggested by the weight loss and other opportunistic infection lymphadenopathy and kaposi's sarcoma it is confirmed by the hiv serology test stool microscopy and cultures that shows cryptosporidium microsporidia isospora bili enteropathy it is typically hiv infection next diabetic autonomic neuropathy it is suggested by known diabetic intermittent watery painless diarrhea postural hypotension impotence urinary retention it is confirmed by measurement of blood pressure in the lying and standing position loss of bit to bit variation during slow deep breathing so that is typically diabetic autonomic neuropathy 
thyrotoxicosis it is suggested by heat intolerance tremor nervousness palpitation frequent bowel movements and goiter so it is confirmed by decrease in tss level increase in free t4 or increase in free t3 level so that is typical thyrotoxicosis in which we are seeing recurrent diarrhea without blood without fever next carcinoid syndrome it is suggested by facial flushing wheeze and abdominal pain increase 24 hour urinary 5 hiaa so 5 hiaa that means 5 hydroxy indol acetic acid so that is typically carcinoid syndrome in all this condition we are seeing recurrent diarrhea without blood without fever chronic diarrhea in children initial investigations full blood count urine and electrolyte test liver function test the first reason of the chronic diarrhea in children it is the lactose intolerance that is suggested by bloatedness colicky abdominal pain diarrhea after digestion of lactose containing food it is confirmed by stool analysis that shows presence of reducing substance in the liquid portion of the stool and ph of stool less than 5.5 so that is typically lactose intolerance next cow's milk protein intolerance it is suggested by crampy abdominal pain diarrhea after ingestion of cow's milk or formula onset of symptoms may be delayed after consumption it is confirmed by response to withdrawal of cow's milk formula chronic infection of bowel for example salmonella campylobacter giardia lambia etc so it is suggested by abdominal discomfort flatulence frequent water is stool plus or minus bloody type of diarrhea it is confirmed by stool microscopy and culture of the organism chronic diarrhea in children typically of the celiac disease that is suggested by anorexia irritability frequent bulky offensive stools failure to thrive abdominal distension it is confirmed by celiac screening test and duodenal biopsy next cystic fibrosis that is present in the infancy it is suggested by liver function test meconium ileus in the neonate fatty diarrhea malabsorption recurrent chest infection and failure to thrive it is confirmed by the sweat test where chloride more than 60 millimol per liter and genetic testing one mutation is equal to mild disease two mutations is equal to severe disease and response to pancreatic enzyme replacement so that is typically cystic fibrosis next inflammatory bowel disease inside the adolescent it is suggested by the chronic diarrhea with abdominal pain weight loss right lower quadrant mass or fullness and mouth ulcers it is confirmed by colonoscopy with biopsy and barium studies that shows keep lesions string sign it is present in the advanced cases in crohn's or loss of hostrescence mucosal edema ulceration in ulcerative colitis so that is typically inflammatory bowel disease all these conditions can lead to chronic diarrhea in children now what is the treatment of diarrhea the first one rehydration as diarrhea causes dehydration the first measure should be taken to rehydrate the body so the rehydration therapy first thing and depending upon the cause either anti diarrheal antibiotic drugs we should give or prescribe to the patients I hope through this presentation now you understand about the diarrhea if you like this presentation please try to share it with your friends group batch and colleagues thank you so much everyone